Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. And guys, we are back here live in Honolulu, Hawaii. As always, this is your host, Prince Dice, coming to you guys live all the way from Denver, Colorado, even though we're broadcasting in Hawaii. But as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So today's video is going to be about, as you can see in the description box, today's episode is going to be about uh, your... It's going to be about... Mutual funds versus ETFs. Kind of stuttered there, finally got it out a little bit. Mutual funds versus ETFs. But before we get into that, we, I'm going to tell you what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what are mutual funds. We're going to talk about what are ETFs. We're going to talk about some differences. And we're going to talk about, you know, which ones you can use in your uh, arsenal uh, portfolio investing or whatnot. But anyway, stay tuned so we can just get into it. So the first thing, let's talk about what are mutual funds in general. Mutual funds, if it was be said in an easy way, it will be said in an easy way to be a like a basket, right? Let's say right now you were interested in a growth stock, which is more so more so of like something like a technology stock, right? But you don't know which technology stocks are buying. When you look at the technology world right now, you have a lot of things. You have uh, Amazon, you have Google. We have Apple, which is on its way to be a $10 billion company or whatnot, right? So you have so many different companies that are out there. When you look at the technology world, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, you don't know which ones to pick. And you, you also have, ask, have to ask yourself, what if the company I pick holds? What if the company I pick fails? For example, Blockbuster. I always love to use that example because we all know Blockbuster, or at least remember, I'm depending on how old you are. We all remember how Blockbuster, everybody went to Blockbuster to rent movies. Now it's pretty much gone, right? We don't know which technology company will disappear. They're high risk. Now, Princeton, what does that have to do with a mutual fund? This is exactly what it has to do with a mutual fund. So instead of picking one particular company, you're going to pick a basket, right? Say, so imagine if you had a basket. You take a basket, throw a little bit of Amazon in there, you throw a little bit of Google in there, you throw a little bit of Facebook in there, and then you have a technology stock, right? So what happens is you have a fund manager. A fund manager, usually on Wall Street, works at you know one of the big banks, maybe a J.P. Morgan, maybe a Goldman Sachs, Credit Suzy, the list goes on. They create a mutual fund, and inside of this mutual fund, it may be called technology. It may be called real estate. In, uh, real, uh, real estate. It may be called retail. It could be called a number of things, right? So what they do is whatever that target for that, uh, whatever the target is for that mutual fund, it piles those things in. And when you invest, you get a little bit of all of that. So instead of just going out and buying Microsoft. You can buy mutual, a technology mutual fund that has a little bit of Microsoft, a little bit of Facebook, a little bit of Apple, all these technology companies bundled in one. Now, let's talk about the pros and the cons of having a mutual fund. Because it's my, it's, in my opinion, and you guys let me if you think about this, guys and girls, I know what you think about this, but if you can't tell me the downside to something, I don't think you know it that well, Right. If you can't tell me the downside to something, I don't think you know it that well. It's like a date. You go out on a date, you know, um, a guy or a girl, and you say, hey, what do you like about Susie or Robert or whatever the case may be? The girl may say, hey, the guy may say, a girl, hey, I'm, everything about Robert is perfect. They know nothing wrong with perfect. You'll probably think they're in the honeymoon phase. So that kind of relates to the world of investing because of that's how – um, you know, I, that's the way I observe. You got to know some downsides. So anyway, I digress. Back to pros and cons of mutual funds. The pros of a mutual fund is diversification, right? Why is diversification a good thing? Let's say if you invested into Blockbuster 20 years ago, and that's where you put all of your money. Now, guess where your money is now? Not doing so well, right? Not doing so well due to the fact of, um, not doing so well because, you know, Blockbuster doesn't exist anymore. But so, you know, when you diversify, you have a couple of companies. You have numerous amounts of companies. So if one fails, another one is still doing well. If you had a mutual fund, 
and Netflix was to crash, but also you have Facebook in there that's doing well, Microsoft. So you have your money spread out. So mutual fund is usually a basket. So that's one of the pros of it is that it diversifies. And you can pay one fee. Um, you pay one fee, and you pretty much can buy right into a mutual fund, right? Some mutual funds. Now, another uh, another good thing about mutual funds is that it diversifies. And let's say if you only had $1,000, right? We all know Amazon right now costs us about $1,300. And $1,300 is not enough to diversify. So you can take $1,300, put it inside of a technology mutual fund, per se, and your money could be diversified inside of one fund, right? So it doesn't cost a whole – it's cheaper to diversify. So one of the good things is it diversifies. Another good thing is it's a cheaper way to diversify. Let me grab some water here for a second. That's my green lucky cup. But anyway, back to the point. Now we talked about the good things. Now let's talk about the bad side. What is the bad side of mutual funds, right? The bad side of mutual funds is that they are actively managed. Hear me out. Actively. Actively manages when a fund manager, someone like myself, let's imagine myself, even though I'm not a fund manager, let's say take someone like myself, I'm behind the scenes slowly moving uh, the stocks inside of the mutual fund, right, to match the mission. So I'm moving stocks. I may keep Netflix for a while. I may get rid of Netflix and jump into Facebook. I may get rid of Facebook and get into a new technology company. Whatever the mission of that mutual fund is or something that you can read through the perspectives, right, and if I'm pronouncing that correctly, tell you what that mutual fund mission is. So what I'm doing is, me as a fund manager, I'm moving around stocks, I'm moving things around. The thing about that is when you're moving around stocks, when you're buying and selling, moving things out of in and out of the mutual fund, those occur fees. What are fees? Buying and selling fees, just like if you go on E-Trade and you go buy 10 shares of Amazon, you know, it's going to charge you a transaction fee. The same thing for a fund manager. And when you have those fees, guess who ends up paying those fees? Guess who those fees turn over to? You. Now, mutual fund is not going to send you a bill and say, hey, guess what? You know, we bought and sold. We need five. No, they're going to take that out of the funds that it manages. So which means that instead of you getting more growth, your growth could be going to transaction fees. Second of all, I'm the fund manager. I have to get paid some type of way. This is the second uh, disadvantage, or I would say not a disadvantage, but a con, right? I have to get paid. I'm an actual fund manager. I'm in here managing your stocks. I'm in here managing your portfolio, right? So even though I'm managing your stocks, even though I'm managing your portfolio, I have a wife and I have a son, little Wesley, right? And they like to eat. They like to, you know, whatever. I have to make a living. So by me making a living, I have to charge a fee, right? So a lot of things is people buy mutual funds, they don't even know what the fees are. So you got to look at what the fees are because I'm not doing this for my health. I'm not doing it for free. I have to make a living some type of way. So I am managing your funds, right? So when I'm managing your funds, um, you are curing a fee. The more money I make, the less money the fund makes. The less money the fund makes, the less money you as the investor makes. So those are two pros. Those are two cons of mutual funds, and that is what a mutual fund is. Now we're going to slide over, and we're going to get into an ETF. What is an ETF, right? Someone just uh, wrote me on my Facebook page the other day and said, what is an ETF? ETF has kind of, I won't say taken over the market, but they became pretty popular probably in the most recent 10, especially the last 10 years, but the last 10 or 20 years, it became extremely popular for mutual funds. And not mutual funds, but ETFs. ETFs, it's an acronym. It stands for Exchange Traded Fund. Again, that is Exchange Traded Fund. Now, a mutual fund, not a mutual fund, but an ETF, kind of mixing myself up there, but an ETF, what it does is it, it tracks a particular industry. For, for example, let's say the retail industry, right? It passively tracks the industry. Remember what I said earlier about what a mutual fund does. It is what it is what managed. It is actively managed. Like I said, me, the fund manager, I'm back here trying to move things and trying to beat the market, trying to do whatever the case may be. So I'm actively managing, right? A ETF 
passively manages. Means that you take me and all I do is I track something. For prime example, you can have an ETF that tracks the Dow Jones. Whatever the Dow Jones does, I just follow it. Whatever the Dow Jones does, I just follow it. Whatever the NASDAQ does, I follow it. What if the S&P 500 do, do I follow it? What if the real estate industry do I follow it? Whatever the bond market. So it's, it just goes on and on. It just mimics a particular industry. Now, the good thing about this is, since it is what kind of managed? Passively. Since it is passively managed, it is cheaper for the investor, right? Since I'm not in here trying to beat the market and do buy and sell like a, a mutual fund, I'm doing less work. I pretty much just hit the autopilot button. So the fees are a whole lot cheaper. Oh, drastically lower in an ETF versus a mutual fund. Another good thing about an ETF, an ETF trades like a stock versus a mutual fund. A mutual fund, in most cases, you have to have a certain amount of money to invest into the mutual fund. Some mutual funds have a minimum investment of $3,000, initial investment. Some of them have an initial investment of $1,000. Some could be $5,000. It has an initial amount of investment. Say if you only had 1000 bucks, right? So with an ETF, there is no minimum. You just have to buy the shares. You buy it just like you would buy any other stock. You buy it, you hold it, whatever the case may be. <coughs> now, what are the downsides to ETFs? Now, the downside to ETFs, many will say, is that, hey, well, if the market goes down, it just follows the market down. It doesn't try to, uh, you know, beat the market or anything like that or whatever the case may be. So some people don't like them because they say, hey, well, if the market is going to go down, it's going to fall up with it, then what good is it for me to have? Why can't I have something that's going to buy and sell? You know, so even though it's, I just thought about it, even though it's a little chilly here, it's beautiful back in Hawaii where we're shooting live from right now. But that's the thing about it. So people don't like that. Some of the some of the critics of ETF says, hey, they just follow the market, right? Whether the market goes up or down, it just follows. It's just uh, what they call it. Some people call it a slave or a dummy or autopilot or whatever. It doesn't think of its own. It just says, hey, track real estate. Real estate goes up. Real estate goes down. Real estate goes to the side. Real estate, whatever. It's just going to go with it, right? So the thing is, it's not trying to beat the market. So some people don't like it. I won't say don't like it, but that's what critics would say. One of the things that critics would say about ETFs is change traded funds. Now that you know the difference, now you know uh, what a mutual fund is and an ETF is, what are the big takeaways? What are the differences? The differences are, one, a mutual fund is actually managed by a fund manager and it cures more fees. In order to see if a mutual, in my eyes, in order, <coughs> in order to see if a mutual fund is worth it, go to a, uh, maybe go to a, a site like E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, the Scott Trade, maybe some type of, it's all type of software is out there. Stretch the mutual fund out over at least 10 years or 20 years, stretch it out 10 years at least, right? And then you're gonna match it to the S&P 500. As we all know, if you watch this show, the S&P 500 is what? Exactly, it is the benchmark of finance. So by it being the benchmark of finance, you need to compare your investment to the S&P 500, right? So when you do that, that's a way that you can see what's, you know, if a mutual fund has even outperformed. If you're paying an actual fund manager like myself to beat the market and they're not beating the market, you will be better off just going and investing into the S&P 500, right? And it's a sad truth is most mutual funds <coughs> over, 10 year, over a 10 year span or more do not beat the S&P 500. Of course, mutual funds have a hot year, hot two years, hot three, some maybe even five. But once you stretch out the performance over 10 years, most of them won't even beat the market. 90 something percent won't beat the market. So, and if a mutual fund has beaten the market the last 10 years, you gotta ask yourself the question, what they always say investing? Past performance is not a guarantee of future performance, right? Just because something performed well 10 years ago does not mean they're going to perform well five years from now, right? Those are the things you need to think of. When you are looking at a mutual fund, when you're looking at a particular stock, um, how are they performing compared to the S&P 500? 
Now, an ETF, you can get an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. You can get an ETF that tracks the NASDAQ. You can get an ETF that tracks the Dow Jones. Now, when you do all of those, um, you can do it for extremely low fee. The fee is way lower for the fund since it is what? Passively managed. Since it is passively managed, it's way cheaper. So now you have a cheap way of tracking the S&P 500. And that's the big difference. Active, passive. One is actively managed, mutual funds. One is passively managed. Mutual funds have more fees, usually have more fees than ETFs. Why? Mutual funds are actively managed. A fund manager creates them, and the fund manager manages them, whatever, whatever the case may be. The ETFs are just an autopilot. It just follows something, right? If you have the ETF that tracks the S&P 500, the market crashes tomorrow, guess what? It's going to go down exactly with it. So that is the difference between an ETF and a mutual fund. But we spoke about what was a mutual fund. We spoke about what was an ETF. We also spoke about what, uh, what is the difference between them and the pros and cons of each. Now I'm going to give you my personal opinion. Now, this is my personal opinion. This is not any advice to you. This is not telling anybody what to do, what are things like that. But throughout my reading and throughout my research, what I have noticed is that most companies or most fund managers, most people, it's a proven, I think it's the statistic is 92, 93% of active fund managers do not beat the S&P 500 over a 10-year span. And then the ones that do beat it, the superstars that do beat it, they can't continue the success. Those are facts, right? Here's another interesting fact. You guys heard of Warren Buffett, right? Had to take a sip of my green lucky cup there. But you guys heard of Warren Buffett. The reason why I bring this up, Warren Buffett did a 10-year bet with a fund manager. I can't think of his name right now. I can't pronounce it. I remember I, I read it out of his 2018 annual report. He bet a hedge fund manager $1 million. $1 million will go to your um, $1 million will go to your favorite hedge, not hedge fund. $1 million will go to your favorite charity, right? $1 million will go to your favorite charity, right? Whoever wins, $1 million will go to the favorite charity. I said that like 10 times. <laughs> but anyway, so what so what they did was Warren Buffett said, hey, I'm just going to invest into the S&P 500. You can go out. You can go out and get all the hedge fund managers you want. Talk to all of his guys well-connected on Wall Street. He know all the top hedge fund managers. Do whatever you want to do. And we're going to see how you're going to perform in 10 years. Whoever wins, whoever, has, whoever makes the most money in 10 years, million dollars will go to the hedge, to the, not the hedge fund, but to the uh, nonprofit foundation. So off goes the hedge fund manager. He goes to Wall Street. He gets all of the best, best and brightest minds and thousands of people. Over the 10 years, he made about 10,000 trades. First two years in 2007, 2007, 2008, he performed very well. But over the last eight years, he performed very poorly compared to the S&P 500. He compounded 2%. At the end of the 10 years, he went from a million dollars to $1.2 million, right? But the S&P 500 went from $1 million to $1.8 million. That's just pure S&P 500, right? Nothing fancy, nothing, you know, crazy, anything like that. That's how the stock performed, out, you know, outperformed his hedge fund manager. Throughout that whole time, um, I think Warren Buffett said he only made one trade in which he went from a bond to a uh, his class B or whatever the case may be. But in, at the end of the day, Warren Buffett won because his S&P 500 made $1.8 million versus his hedge fund manager, not just a guy who's trading stocks at his house. The top hedge fund tra um, traders in the world only made $200,000 over 10 years. I don't even know if they calculated the fees. I think they did calculate the fees out of that. But you can see... So you can see when you have a mutual fund, someone who's trying to beat the market, it's pretty slim that a person can beat the market on a consistent basis. Very, very slim that a person can do it. Professionals can't do it. Mostly, you know, 
Uh, most professionals cannot beat the S&P 500 on a consistent basis. So, and the ETF is a cheap way to get into it. That's not my personal, that's just a story that came out of Warren Buffett's 2018 shareholders on a report. If you wanna read that, it's all over the web. You can go to BerkshireHathaway.com and read about it when he talks about the story and then I read the whole thing this year. So, and you know, if everything is willing, I'll be at the meeting there giving you guys coverage. So, but as always, right, we spoke about the mutual fund. We spoke about the pros and the cons. We spoke about the ETF. We did the pros and the cons of ETFs. We also spoke about the differences between them. Then we gave a personal story of Warren Buffett hedge fund against the index, right? Because you have index funds that are mutual funds. You have mutual funds that track the S&P 500. You have mutual funds that track indexes, but you got to look at the fees of that mutual fund index fund compared to the new ETFs. Now, who knows what may come out next, but fees are dramatically dropping in the financial industry is one thing that I noticed, just due to technology, due to uh, now, if you wanna buy uh, AT&T stock, you don't need to call a broker in New York and, hey, buy this, even though some people do that, you now can log on and do it, or you can just pick up a handy dandy cell phone and do it yourself. So those are the things. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to wrap it up. I hope this uh, episode has been very educational to you. If you got any questions, drop comments below. But I'm here each and every Friday. Well, not each and every Friday. Every other Friday at 3 p.m., the Prince of Investing. My name is Prince Dykes. And always stay tuned. Drop comments below if you got questions. Um, until the next video, podcast, or whatever you see me do crazy around the globe, Peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you. Thank you.